If you wanna buy an apartment building, there are five steps you need to take. Also, there's one toxic belief that slows down your success. In this video, you'll get a real life example. I decided to interview four of my students who recently purchased their first 10 unit property together to share exactly how they pulled this off. Stick around until the end of the video as they share their best piece of advice for those looking to take on a similar transaction. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help a thousand people create a million dollars in net worth with real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Let's talk about one toxic notion or limiting belief. Many new investors believe that there is a progression that needs to happen as a real estate investor. You have to start with a single family dwelling and then move to a duplex and then a triplex and then a fourplex and so on and so forth. But this is absolutely not true. Buying an apartment building is not all that different from any other transaction. There are a few nuances to it, as you'll see, but it doesn't require years of experience to be able to acquire a building. It does, however, require strategy and execution. So let's break down the five steps required to purchase an apartment building. The first step is identifying an opportunity. There are three kinds of apartment building strategies. The first is to buy what's called a distressed asset. This would be an apartment building that is mostly vacant or potentially has large deferred maintenance that needs to be remedied. Simply put, the bank will not be willing to finance an asset like this in its current form. So the strategy is to fix all the elements that need to be repaired and bring the building up to current vacancy standards and then find finance the property through a conventional lender. The second strategy with apartment buildings is called value add. This would be a building that has vacancy and an acceptable range to be financed, but could be undervalued because of lower rents or units that could be cosmetically renovated to bring them up to current standards. And the final apartment strategy is a turnkey building. This is a building that is tenanted and operating smoothly and needs very little renovation or increase in the rental rates. This last strategy is how my students found an opportunity. Because of the current pandemic situation, they didn't want to get into a building that required large renovations as there has been a shortage of material and labor for projects exactly like this. We specifically wanted something that was turnkey um, in order to avoid the supply chain holdup as well as the material cost of what everyone's dealing with uh, at this time. So their strategy was to find a building operating efficiently and find some small areas to improve. Another way they optimized this opportunity was they were able to acquire the property off market, allowing them to negotiate without having complete competing offers. To be successful in real estate, what we need to do was just kind of seek out those opportunities that people overlooked. And in this case, one area that we thought would be the best was, is to try to find something off market. The second step to acquiring an apartment building is being creative with your offers and your negotiations. One of my favorite clauses to include in any real estate transaction is an assignment clause which states that the property contract can be assigned to anyone besides the current buyer. The reason this is so valuable is because when you are making your initial offer, you may not know who will be sitting on the title of the property in the bank's eyes. So if you have an assignment clause, you can change who will sit on the title to satisfy your lender. Because we had to move very quickly, we bought the building under Natasha and my corporation with an assignment clause in there. Mm -hmm. And basically saying that within the, the closing period, we can assign this building to another purchaser within that time and the seller agreed to that. It's a very minor thing, but very important because you don't know what your structure is going to end up with by the time you turn around to close the building. Another negotiating tactic that was used here was a 21 business day due diligence. The reason that business days is so important is that sometimes it's missed on a contract and the seller sees 21 days and thinks that this is three weeks of due diligence when in fact 21 business days gives you almost a month of due diligence time. Another creative tactic that was used by the buyers was a condition stating that after four weeks of due diligence, the sellers could have the opportunity to place the property on the open market. We came to the agreement of the price of 1.85 million. We also included a clause that the seller would be able to put it on the market after four weeks. A clause like this gives the seller the confidence that they can potentially look at a new buyer while the existing deal is still on the table. This can be hugely helpful when the market is very competitive. The third step to acquiring an apartment building is performing due diligence. This is your time to put on your detective hat and find out everything and anything related to the property. The first question that should come up is why is this person selling? You should be especially diligent on a property that is already renovated and generating income. Usually there's more to the story and it's your job to find out what that story is. 
Your other responsibility during due diligence is to secure financing. And the team on this transaction employed a brilliant strategy of seeking out the existing lender and having a conversation with them. What it came down to is a question of time. And the quickest way that we could have secured this financing was we got the name and contact number of the current lender that had the building contacted them as they were familiar with the building already. And so then it was just a matter of us bringing forth our paperwork and, and whatnot and them, you know, kind of gathering that information on us as they were quite familiar with the building already. This most likely streamlined the process of financing, which came in very handy with the tight conditional time the buyers had. The other element of due diligence you'll want to focus on is the property condition itself. Hiring a qualified home inspector to go through the property with a fine tooth comb is always money well spent. Michael explains how they went one step further and had the sewer lines of the property scoped to make sure there were no issues underground, which could later cause significant problems. The uh, home inspector doesn't set a camera down say your your sewer so we also included that just with old clay tile or if it's cast iron it's always good to get a camera down there and see what it's like the fourth step to acquiring an apartment building is figuring out how to increase revenue and decrease expenses an apartment building's value is based on the net operating income. So if you can increase revenue and decrease expenses, you can increase the value of the building. You may need to get even more creative on a turnkey property as there will be less levers to pull. Listen to some of the elements the team identified right away to decrease expenses. Moving forward, reducing expenses, we are looking at low flow shower uh, fixtures, taps, going to all the LED, high efficiency toilets, and also in the hall in the common area. Uh, sensor lighting. In order to optimize revenue, the plan is to push out electrical expenses to the tenant. One thing that was beautiful when we saw the building is that it is completely metered. So there's 11 meters, one common and one on each unit, which allows us to push back the electric to the tenants that come in. The other ways they plan to optimize revenue are to start charging a la carte for internet services and also by converting the two car garage to storage units and then renting them out to the tenants. And the fifth step to acquiring an apartment building might seem counterintuitive, but it's very important. And that is that you have to know what your exit strategy will be even before you acquire the property. Because of the tight conditional time on this deal, the buyers decided to go with a one-year term with their lender. The reason for doing the one year is that there's been huge delays in the last few months or even year and a bit to go through CMHC. So the waiting list or the wait time to get an approved mortgage through CMHC is about four to six months right now. And we just didn't have that time to, to waste when the seller wanted to do this really quickly off market. So we went with an A lender with the option. We had this discussion early with the lender to say, can we tra transfer this over to CMHC within a year or so? They're totally fine with that. So in about six months, we're going to approach the lender again in order to start the paperwork and the due diligence in transferring this over to a CMHC mortgage within or just at the one year mark. Once the CMHC loan is secured, if there is refinance money that can be pulled out of the transaction by optimizing revenue and decreasing expenses, this will allow the team to go and purchase additional properties. As promised, I want to share what Natasha, Walter, Tanis, and Michael attribute to their success on this transaction, and that is the power of partnerships. We as investors can do things on our own, but if you're able to find suitable partners that have unique skill sets to yours, it can allow you to build your real estate state investing portfolio just that much faster. The saying goes, I'd rather own 10% of 10 buildings than 100% of one. And there's one more thing that Tanis brought up, which is very important. We want to leave emotion out of partnerships. We want to make sure that we have everything contracted and everything is thought of logically as a business perspective. If you're looking to learn how to buy an apartment building, I have some upcoming trainings in the fall of 2021. Check out my website at darrenvoros.com for more information. If you have questions about purchasing an apartment building or any other real estate related questions, feel free to leave those in the comments section below. To continue learning about various real estate investing strategies, tips, and techniques, check back here every week as I release a new video every Tuesday. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, where I regularly post additional tips on real estate investing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.